Hello, my name is Kyle McCrone here with Wyatt Mullen, and you're listening to another episode of Cascadia Mountain Weather. We're looking at the first big storm, winter storm coming up this weekend with a ton of mountain snow and then also rain. It's going to be an exciting storm to watch and Wyatt's going to talk all about it. Yeah, so after a like, really extended November dry period, now we have some active weather. We're going to kind of approach this in three different parts. So we'll talk about some of the crazy precipitation amounts that we're going to get. Then we'll go into the snow and we'll go do a deep dive into that, talking about snow levels throughout the weekend and going into the future. Then we'll look at some winds as well, um, just if you are planning on going out. This is a satellite image and we can see this first storm approaching. I want to kind of point your attention to the fact it's coming from both the west and the north. Generally, that correlates with lower snow levels and better snow in the mountains here, a little bit colder temperatures. Um, and then if we go to this other satellite image, what we'll see is that this storm down here, which is near Hawaii, is actually going to join up with the jet stream and send us a pretty traditional atmospheric river, a pineapple express sometimes they're called because it's a lot warmer and brings uh, rain to a lot higher elevations. So right now, I just want to point out the fact that we have winter storm warnings all along the crest of the Cascades um, because we're going to be getting a lot of snow in the next couple of days before that warm up occurs. These winter storm warnings show kind of above 2000 feet, maybe two to three feet, maybe even a bit more in some areas. So definitely going to be a good slug of snow to start out the weekend. I want to show kind of this evolution of precipitation as we go through. So this is Thursday uh, right now, and as we move forward in six hour increments, you'll see that like um, Friday is going to be relatively wet. Uh, and then we have another system kind of moving through Saturday. And that's when a lot of this uh, is going to be falling as snow. Um, Saturday, like during the day might not actually be too stormy, but then Sunday night is really when we see the snow levels rise. We see a lot of precipitation um, and we see some strong winds as well. Like this is the forecast looking for like total precipitation from uh, now through Sunday night, like pretty, pretty rainy uh, up in the mountains, five to maybe even 10 inches. Um, and in the lowlands, three inches, three to four inches over kind of a 72 to 96 hour period, quite wet. And then looking further out, I mean, the storm train is, is coming. You can't, this is like far enough out that like, we're not certain if this is really going to occur, but like some forecasts in the next 10 to 10 days to even two weeks are calling for seven to 10 inches in the lowlands and upwards of uh, like close to 20 inches of precipitation, maybe even 30 in the mountains. So we are definitely entering the stormy period. Um, and like, this is a photo from 2006 um, from the storm that dumped 18 inches of rain at Mount Rainier over, uh, or sorry, even more rain than that over an eight, uh, 36 hour period. But just crazy amounts and it led to a lot of flooding a lot of damage not going to be quite that um rainy this time but a lot of precipitation coming through now we're going to switch to the wind or sorry the snow we'll see that the winter storm severity like definitely going to be some travel impacts um i would be shocked if the passes don't get closed at some point right national weather surface is calling for two to three feet at snoqualmie and stevens pass uh through saturday um, and so just like if you are planning to travel across the passes, be aware of that um, because, yeah, I, I almost certainly we will see closures. Um, just a point forecast kind of highlighting some of these snow tolls. This is up near Baker, but six to 10 inches over Friday uh, and then another 14 inches Friday night. Uh, and then you can kind of see that we do transition a bit to the rain as the snow level increases. Um, this is a model run, so we can see that snow is falling at low elevations at first. Um, so this is looking through, uh, it's looking at like kind of 24 hours through 4 p.m. tomorrow. Lots of snow coming in, falling on Stevens and Snoqualmie Pass. Um, still falling on like through kind of Saturday, but then you can see that as we get into kind of tw this 24 hour period ending 4 a.m. Monday, look at how much like even though precipitation is still falling, it's completely disappearing, right? Like Rainier is down here getting absolutely dumped on, but um, up in the high elevate, it's only falling in the highest elevations on the east side. Um, this is uh, looking at kind of, yeah, oh, sorry. We will switch now. This is total snowfall. Once again, kind of in that 20 to 30 uh, inch amount 
um, by the end of Saturday, kind of Saturday night. Um, on the high resolution models show even higher amounts. Uh, I mean, this shows 100 inches on Rainier. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but um, pretty, um, definitely a lot of snow. And then we can start looking at the snow level, right? So we start kind of two to 3,000 feet in the North Cascades, bump up for a bit on Sunday, and then drop down uh, shortly on Sunday night. And then we go really high, 7,000 feet. Or we can look at this kind of cool graphic from the Center for uh, Western Weather and Water Extremes. This shows for the Nooksack Basin. So that three to 4,000 foot level um, for the first couple of days. This is 10 a.m. Friday, 10 a.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday. Um, and you see that overnight Saturday, we get to maybe six, 7,000 feet of uh, elevation for the snow level. And then on Monday and Tuesday, wow, we're up near 10,000 feet. Like the summit of Baker might even be getting rain. So um, definitely, uh, definitely gonna raise that snow level. Um, and it will be interesting to see what happens with the snowpack. So this uh, graph here is going to show the snow depth um, over the different periods of the storm. So starting out, we can see like the snow depth really building, building. This is a building through Saturday. Um, you know, it's going to be a huge change. But then we're actually going to start to see it waste away and decrease starting Sunday into Monday and Tuesday even more. So, you know, we definitely want to hope that we don't lose all the snow at the passes. You know, Snoqualmie starting from nothing. Stevens is only starting from a foot or so. Uh, and it remains to be seen. Uh, the lower elevations are definitely not going to fare as well. But the higher elevations, four, five, six thousand feet, they're definitely not going to lose all the snow they get. And there is the benefit of the rain is going to really help, hopefully create a really solid base percolate down through any, you know, surface horror or weak layers kind of left there. So it's not all bad. And this doesn't look like the type of storm that will like wash away the entire snowpack. Yeah. And then quick glance at just the wind. Um, it's a little bit hard to see here, but like Saturday, um, like overnight, this Friday night into Saturday, we will be seeing some quite strong ridgetop winds kind of out of the West and the Southwest. Um, and then especially as that atmospheric river comes in, we might see gusts along the ridge lines of 70 to 80 miles an hour even. Um, you can kind of see this areas, especially in that kind of northeastern Cascades, um, getting into that 70 plus uh, knots. Uh, so definitely quite windy. Um, yeah. I think when we talk about recreation, it's important to like look at where we're starting from. So this is the current snow depth. And as we said, there's virtually no snow below 4,000 feet. And people have only really been skiing above maybe like 5,000 feet. Um, and the snow depth increases dramatically between four and 5,000 feet. Uh, so that's a important, important to keep in mind. Um, so Crystal is opening uh, tomorrow on Friday, and they're opening to everyone this weekend. Uh, Saturday could be a pretty good day. Who knows how much terrain is going to be open because they don't have a lot of base. There's definitely going to be a lot of avalanche mitigation work, but uh, does look like pretty good conditions on Saturday. Um, with the other ski areas, the only other one that's open is Mission Ridge. It opened last weekend uh, due to their snowmaking abilities. The other resorts are not opening yet, although Stevens Pass is holding a rail jam uh, and running like a rope tow, just a single rope tow on Saturday during the middle of the day. So if you are looking to go up there um, to do some inbounds laps, make sure you're respectful that, you know, you don't get in the way of anyone doing grooming or operating. And the same is really true if you're looking to do any uphill laps in a ski area. Um, be sure to check their uphill policies, make sure they're open. Don't get in the way of any groomers or anything or else they'll have to close it to the public and for the future. And note that Alpental is closed to all preseason travel this year. So Alpental is a total no-go. We want to start to make our users aware of NWAC. I'm sure most people here know the Northwest Avalanche Center. We have a great avalanche center. We're lucky to have daily forecasts. We have forecasters out in all kinds of different zones. So it's just a great organization. Uh, and here, let's take a look at the, the kind of Baker area forecast. So for uh, this is comes out at 6 p.m. every day. And for Friday, we got moderate and Saturday considerable. So definitely, and I think like through the weekend, the avalanche injury is just going to keep rising. We're going to have, you know, something like two, three feet of fresh snow. There's possibly some buried surface hoar layers. Then you get rain on top of that with warming temperatures. Um, 
I would really not recommend backcountry travel past about midday Sunday. And even on Saturday, you know, you still got to be really careful thinking about where you're wanting to go. If you're looking to get your first, you know, snowshoe trip out, you know, I think going on a trail that stays in the trees, uh, you could find a lot of fresh snow and have a lot of fun breaking trail. If you're looking to ski, I think the options are actually backcountry skiing, I think is more limited than even possibly past weekends, more limited than you might want. Uh, it's really exciting to see this first big snowfall, but the problem is that the, the slopes that do have a snowpack tend to be higher elevation avalanche slopes, and we're going to be looking at higher avalanche danger. And those areas are just more difficult to access. For example, Washington Pass is closing. Certain high elevation roads won't become drivable anymore. And down in the trees where we find typical storm skiing, safer terrain, there really isn't enough base. And uh, two to three feet of snow is not going to cover up down logs and other things. So there's hazard both from the avalanche side and from, you know, catching a ski on something and messing up your legs. So Although it's like really exciting to have first big snow, I would really encourage people to exercise patience and cautiousness. You know, it doesn't mean you can't get out, but definitely be thoughtful about what you do. We have a long season, so don't, don't screw it up now. Definitely don't make, you know, you want to enjoy skiing all the way to the end of the, uh, to the winter and like, don't get injured now. So yeah. Transitioning to uh, just a quick overview of what we're looking at going forward. Um, it does look like the precipitation will probably continue. There's hints that maybe next weekend might actually be, well, definitely drier than this weekend, but might be a little bit, uh, might be kind of nice. Um, so that's potential. Um, and we're looking at a pretty standard El Nino picture, at least in terms of temperature um, across the U.S. right now. So much of the U.S. is above normal for six to 10 days. If we look... Uh, kind of for the monthly precipitation that came out today, you'll see that it, December looks like it's going to be above normal. Well, that's because all the storms are about to hit us. Uh, and then looking in terms of the temperature, it looks like kind of equal chances, maybe, uh, maybe slightly leaning towards slightly warmer than normal. But that's also a result of kind of the uh, this Pineapple Express that we're about to see that's going to start us out on quite a warm note. Um, so hard to say what the rest of the winter is going to um, look like, but we definitely will get some storms coming in and it's kind of exciting to see this, this first one and be able to follow, track some interesting weather. Yeah. Well, thank you to everyone for listening to another episode. If you enjoy this, uh, please subscribe to our channel and have a great weekend out there.